It's really unfortunate, but a lot of health issues we see today start in the mouth, and they're the direct result of actions taken when in the dentist's office, from mercury fillings to root canals. We may have made the choice to receive dental treatments that years later affect our overall health. Today, we're going to find out what can we do to reclaim our health, even if we've already made those choices, and that it's going to start in your mouth. This is the story of Biological Dentistry 2.0 with Dr. Dominique Nish Nishitz, a.k.a. Dr. Dom. I know you as Dr. Dom. The last name yeah. is always a little difficult for some. But hey, man, welcome back. Uh, this this has been about three years ago we recorded the first one. Th thanks, Casper, for having me again. Yeah, talking about biodentistry 2.0 or 3.0 or whatever. <laughs> Optimal <laughs> well, health and starting in the mouth, right? It's 2.0 because 1.0 was all about your book. It starts the amount, right? Okay, and, okay. And that was really a, a, a introduction to biological dentistry. And listen, I got a lot of great feedback from that one because people didn't know that so much of their health issue could start in their mouth. But then yeah. it was a lot of people saying, well, I already had these things. What can I do? Because I didn't know. I can't prevent it now if I already had it. So what can yes. I do? So I came to you with this idea of I'm just going to like throw these different things and questions I get at you and you could just answer them so that people hear it not from me because I'm not the expert you are, but from you. So I wanted to start with a big one that so many people have undergone. And that's so I've had mercury fillings what do I do to negate that? Like, how do I start to reclaim my health if I have mercury fillings in my mouth? So first of all, whatever information we share in here, don't freak out. There's always a solution. <laughs> always. And I actually love the format you're just putting out here because same happens to me that, okay, what can we do now if we have it? So first of all, why are you still having mercury fillings in your mouth? That would be number one filling because the uh, number one question, because the second question I always get is, can I coconut oil pull while I have mercury fillings in my mouth? So first of all, obviously mercury is the most toxic non-radioactive element known to men. And finally, dentists are allowed to say that it's mercury fillings, not silver fillings. And this stuff is outgassing. But don't freak out. The most important thing now is your strategy. I would say... Why still have it? You should find a skilled biological dentist. In the US, there are some called, they are SMART certified. S stands for safe and then mercury amalgam removal technique. Because the mercury filling, while you're wearing it, it outgasses a little bit. So you there's a little bit of mercury coming off from, let's say, acidic drinks and foods, from brushing, from grinding, from oral hygiene, from all these things. But it's in the nanograms. However, if you go to a regular dentist to just take out these mercury fillings, they will do it without any like safety. Therefore, it's not going to be nanograms, but probably grams of mercury landing in your system. So you first have to find the right skilled biodentist who knows how to remove safely. And I have a, a safe amalgam removal checklist. You can find it on Instagram. You can present it to your dentist. It's a straightforward approach. Um, like I just talked to Casper uh, about it, I'm in the midst of finally giving my knowledge to other dentists and a certification, but we need a couple of things. We have, I would say, at least six-fold measurements. Maybe it's too technical for you guys, but find someone who is smart certified. It's not just a rubber dam. You know, special suctions. We even help your body detox with the right protocols afterwards or beforehand and use whatever is possible to not cause more harm. That's basically it. Yeah, and that's a big one, I have to say, Dr. Dome, because so many people just heard, hey, I have mercury fillings. I got to take them out. And then they go and suddenly take them out without the smart procedures, and that gets released, and suddenly they have really big problems. So it, it's really essential you do it the right way and the smart way in both you know, the smart, that technique, and smart using your brain to do it, because otherwise you could actually end up worse off, right? Yes, I've seen so many patients that come to me, like let's say 10 years ago, most patients came very, very chronically sick. Now, actually, our patients are more like you and me, people that are on their journey to optimal health. But anyways, I've seen a ton of patients having, their, when their chronic illness started, was actually a, right after taking out mercury fillings in an unsafe manner, intoxicating them full-blown because the immune system was already on the edge and then this drilling 
But all the stuff that you then swallow gets into your intestines. It's just way more than just wearing them. So before you find someone who is skilled, don't remove it. Invest in yeah, detective work and I'm on it training them. Good, good advice. And I'm glad you're training people because we need it. You know, I I I I hate going against dentists because I don't I think they're all good people, no. right? They're good. We need people. them. We need, we need dentists. We just need them trained a little bit more to move beyond things like mercury fillings and silver and going into more of a holistic viewpoint. So I'm I'm really happy to hear that. You know, if we move along to the next subject, which is a big one. And I actually had this recently where I was around a table with a bunch of people and at least half of them had this procedure. So, and they said, okay, so I've had a root canal. What do I do now? <laughs> it's so funny because I get the same question all the time because I'm informing you about root canals. Yes, again, there is a solution for you guys. Don't freak out. A root canal works for biting. A root canal is an acute pain treatment and all the dentists that help you with it they're actually not to blame. It's a very skilled craftsman fine art that you need to get you guys out of acute pain. It's actually on you that you let your teeth rot that way. Yeah. So first of all, you now have a root canal. You know that it's maybe toxic and that is not something that we use long-term. What we do is an immediate ceramic implant. Immediate means we take out, really, we take out an infected tooth, even with a huge cyst, but we have a special protocol where we basically prepare our patient at least two to four weeks prior to, to the surgery with the right nutrients to boost this immune, their immune systems so that you come in like not in hibernation mode, but fully in anabolic mode, so to speak. And then locally or in surgery, we use everything, intravenous nutrition, hyperbaric oxygen, low-level laser therapy, whatever you can imagine from health optimization or biohacking, we will use to help. And locally in the socket, when we take out the tooth, we will use ozone. We will draw blood to spin it and make PRP membranes. We clean as perfectly as possible, use neurotherapy. But then if that socket is clean and the cyst is gone and all acute inflammation is gone, everything is basically clean and sterile from the ozone, then it makes sense to put something into that socket, which we call in dentistry socket preservation. But we do socket preservation 3.0 using an immediate ceramic implant, which then acts a, like a tent post that with a neutral biomaterial that keeps that socket, the anatomy, intact. Because if you don't use it after taking out the tooth, you lose it. But why not put something in there which is totally neutral and help that anatomy? And now, finally, after 10 years of doing this, the studies we're doing are catching up and it shows that we're actually preserving bone height and width with it. So within the next 10 years, this will be the gold standard because you actually help the body heal and recover way faster. There's never really a surgery, but it's never about the implant. It's about getting you in health first. And then we use bio biomaterials like a ceramic implant, which is a zirconia implant, just as a tool. Would you it's ever your body? Yeah. Would you recommend people get a 3D cone scan prior to this? Or are you just going and saying, listen, there's always ah. an opportunity for infection. So let's just attack it even without the cone scan. Or do you do both? Both, both, both. So first of all, obviously, we use logic. I always ask three questions to the patients or everyone, actually. Any metals in your mouth? Any root canals? Stand up. Any removed wisdom teeth? Stand up. And usually if you answer with a yes, there's ongoing chronic inflammation in your body, in your mouth that interferes. So what we do is if you want to become a patient, you always apply online remotely because most patients fly in from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we need not a cone beam scan, not the three-dimensional one, but we need a current up-to-date panoramic x-ray, the mm -hmm. two-dimensional one where we can see all stuff, metal root canal cavitations I and see. plan. We always plan the full case, no metals, no root canals, no cavitations. When in the office then, like when you come to the clinic on the first day, obviously we do the perfect examination. So everything up until that point was preliminary, right. but with a, let's say 90 plus right direction. And then obviously we use a cone beam scan to really see it three dimensional. And if you look at studies, but also from just experience and look on a cone beam scan on like on the tip of the root of um, root canal treated teeth, there's always an information, at least in 90% of all cases, always. It's always a dead body part. So let's say this. If you have an immune system, there is a chronic inflammation. 
Otherwise, your immune system is like not working properly. Right. Otherwise, something else is a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> you got to look true, at something. True, true. Cell really danger. Big. <laughs> Cell so danger, the, man. <laughs> the, the third one is actually the third question you asked when you get people stand up is, so you've had wisdom teeth pulled, which is, I would say, probably the least known. People know about mercury now. They somewhat know about root canals because of, you know, documentaries like Root Cause and others and, you know, more talk about it. But wisdom teeth pulled still seem to be, what's the problem with that? What would you say? What's the problem with having your wisdom teeth pulled? Yeah. Why do I ask the question, have they had your wisdom teeth pulled? Because that's actually normal in the Western world. I would say at least 80% of all teenagers get them pulled because we grow too narrow and have no space for our wisdom teeth anymore. The problem is the surgeon will only inform you about the surgery and the pain meds and how to treat with swelling and everything. But you will never be prepared for that surgery, meaning you as a teenager going into a surgery unprepared, usually lack of nutrients, critical lack of vitamins like vitamin D3 and critical minerals like magnesium, zinc, boron. You basically in a hibernation mode when going into surgery. So what happens is we are trained as oral surgeons to really be fast because only then insurance pays for it. So four wisdom teeth, general anesthesia maybe, super fast in, eight, in teenage years leaves a huge trauma. You're not prepared for the trauma. So basically the host is the problem. You're in hibernation mode, you're in shock, you're in, fight, you're in stress mode, your body won't heal. It's just not able to heal. That's why a lot of pa patients develop dry sockets, it's just a nasty part of like ongoing antibiotics and it just really doesn't heal. And over time, the gum heals on top of it, but the bone never really fully recovers and turns into something called ischemic bone disease or in layman's terms called cavitations, which better is known in, in medical world as NICO, which stands for neuralgia inducing cavitational osteonecrosis. Or even better, what it really is, is fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone. This is something you do not learn as a dentist in university. It's part of my curriculum. If there's any dentists out there interesting. But this is why you said, why do you ask that question? Because chronic inflammation in the jawbone is the same principle. Innate immune system response, chronic cytokines, TNF-alpha, interleukin 1, beta, nf kappa B, all these things systemically 24-7. Chronic inflammation is the trigger to all sorts of chronic diseases. And therefore, we need to know about jawbone, inflammation, cavitations, removed teeth. Actually, wisdom teeth is the ones that are pulled most, but it can happen after every tooth extraction. So to those that have had their wisdom teeth pulled, what, what do you say to that if they're sitting there going, well, it already happened, Dr. Dom. What do I do now? It's all fear-mongering, Dr. Dom. What should <laughs> right. we do next? <laughs> Stop scaring the people. <laughs> I don't scare. I'm just informing. Of and course. it's actually good because the, our goal is like in the movie Root Cause. Yep. If you are already optimizing everything in your life, your lifestyle, your nutrition, your sleeping hygiene, you go outside in nature, grounding, biohacking, all the things, but you're still not superhuman, like the guy in Root Cause, which is actually your patient, right? You refer yeah, to Yeah, Fraser. Good buddy. Yeah. Fraser, yeah. And it was just the root canal. Same can be for the cavitation. So first of all, again, just use it as information. Oh, wow. I had a wisdom tooth removal. Oh, my teeth look beautiful. A normal dentist doesn't know about cavitation. So maybe we're overlooking something here. And if you look at the wisdom tooth area from a Chinese medicine perspective, this is your central nervous system, your heart meridian, and your small intestine. So a lot of times it's connected to skin eczema, acne, irritable bowel syndrome, and chronic fatigue, thyroid issues you name it. So what can you do then? It's the same as with the root canals. You apply for an appointment. And at one point, we need to make that chronic inflammation, the jawbone, acute again, so your body will heal it. Because basically, your body had no solution. Turn the volume down. Do you have no pain at the area? So pain is really a bad indicator because chronic stuff doesn't hurt. And um, we then have to do a tiny, it's a tiny surgery, actually, just opening it, Local in local anesthesia and cleaning it out we're using piezo surgery. And again, the protocol is always cleaning mechanically, then using a lot of ozone because it's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, antiparasitic, and as a miracle molecule, supports your own innate healing. And then before we draw blood, spin it, make PRP membranes, put it into that cavitation, and close the gum. 
But most importantly, and this is what I believe is the next level of biological dentistry, which I call biodentistry, is then overlapping it with functional medicine and biohacking or health optimization, meaning we prepare our patients for that surgery. So, because just doing that locally perfectly doesn't mean your patient is in anabolic mode. You're probably mm -hmm. not even prepared. So nutrients are key. The bone healing protocol, food design, this is all the next level and stuff that's going to be taught soon. So stay yeah. tuned. It's so, solution. It, it's so true that you can't just go into any procedure and expect a great outcome without preparing for it, without getting your body ready. It's like going into a competition for something athletic and doing no prepare, not going to the gym, not ready, not being ready for yeah. it at all and expected to get a good outcome when you like yes. race the race or something. Yeah. You go on a bodybuilding show, but you forgot to diet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? You will lose. Yeah. You won't win. Exactly. That's a perfect example. Why are we not informing our patients about overall health optimization? Why are we just having consent about the procedure? Right. And why are we not thinking further? So what I'm teaching usually for dentists is local cleaning everything, local bone rows. This is what we always talk about in ceramic implants, in surgery. How can we grow the bone and stuff locally? But what about systemic bone growing? This is where the bone eating protocol comes in. This is where bodybuilding actually comes in and nutrition. There's great studies from other surgeries. For example, Framing, Framingham osteoporosis study showed that people that ate a little bit less, it was only about protein and healing. So it was a huge cohort study. And if they, so one gram per kilogram seems to be the ideal number for being anabolic or not anabolic. So below one gram, they had 30 days longer of hospitalization, for example. So we always recommend not just one gram, but two gram, because the literature is quite clear. We need a surplus. And therefore you heal in warp speed because it's just science. You just have to use the knowledge we have. How does your bone grow? What about vitamin D3? What about calcium? What about osteocalcin? What about insulin? What about all these hormones? And this is obviously something that is my specialty in the world of biodentistry. And I'm needing to bring this to the table because 80% is this. The yes. surgery is great. You need sky, this. But if you can come in clinics that do all, it's way better or work with one. Yeah. So that's yeah. the future, I believe. Oh, yeah. Make that it, post anabolic. <laughs> yeah, it has to be the future. Otherwise, we're, we're kind of playing the losing game, you know, where we're 80% we're forgetting about and focusing on the 20 that really doesn't produce <laughs> the results, which is crazy. It's just crazy talk. So, but, but, you still, but still, you need that 20%, which is great because then you see, I'm talking about next level also for dentists. We're not right. taking something away. We're just no. finally improving the game. And that's all we should be doing is trying to be more efficient, get better outcomes with something yeah. we're already doing and then optimizing that as well. Exactly. You know, moving on to something that's very, very, you know, common when you go to the dentist. You, so you're told you have a cavity, you know, yeah. and, and the dentist says, you know, we got to drill right away. What, what would you say to someone as a second opinion? If you're told you have a cavity, what should someone do? Look for a second opinion, freak out and get the drill. Like, what do you do? This depends. This depends. So uh, a skilled biodentist obviously classifies um, the cavity in like how deep is it. Mm. So if it is, so the outer part of your tooth is called enamel mm -hmm. and the enamel is the hard thing. So if you have initial tooth decay and it's still in the enamel, then I personally would never drill because we know that if we support our body now with lifestyle nutrition and then we can reverse it mm. because basically the bo the tooth builds itself through the blood supply, which is like from the pulp inside out, and then has this dental fluid, but it also comes through the saliva. So if the saliva is rich in minerals and nutrients, you remineralize all the time. But therefore, as a biodentist who is trained, you will then give your patient the recommendation. You will get the recommendation as a patient. Oh, can we check your vitamin D3 level, please? It's probably low. And, oh, what about, what does your diet look like? Because it's quite clear that if you have tooth decay, that you either have a vitamin D3 deficiency or you're gluten intolerant or both of it, and therefore having all oh, lack of minerals overall. So this is the first step. If it's a huge cavity, obviously the ship has sailed and then you need to fill it and drill it and bill it. <laughs> so that's what they say. But again, there's always the fear then but my dentist said, I need a root canal. You don't mm. need a root canal. You only need a root canal when you're really in massive pain. The thing is, we are not trained to understand 
that the tooth can heal itself, even if the if, even if the cavity is super close to the nerve. But obviously, if you as a patient run around in hibernation mode, like all of us out there, you probably have a tooth that dies. So he's right with you need a root canal. You understand the culprit here? You, you have to be preparing. So there's the bone healing protocol with, which supports the dentin number three, that tertiary dentin that rebuilds itself. Uh, again, protein is key, vitamin D3, K2, minerals like magnesium, zinc, borrowed. It's all in the bone healing protocol, but it is something that people forget. They only think about teeth, they need to be brushed. So everyone knows a toothbrush, toothpaste, right? Maybe even oral, like, what is it? Um, tooth mouthwashes and yeah. floss. But how can it be that we that we are so much better in oral hygiene, but we still, tooth decay is still chronic disease number one with 90% of incidence. So mm. something doesn't add up. There's great research showing that our Paleolithic ancestors, they had a lot of um, tartar ta and black buildup and stuff and not really clean teeth. Maybe even like stuff in there. Or mm. Definitely not white teeth. <laughs> but they had no sign of inflammation. And they even proved that in one like two years ago in the University of Freiburg, when they, when they just had one month standard Amer standard Western diet, paleolithic kind of, let's say, paleo-ish food design, one month, 100% less inflammation in gum and teeth and everything. So maybe it's your lifestyle and nutrition. But obviously, we are trained to just repair and um, the Band-Aid for classical Homer Simpson is just, you didn't brush your teeth, that's why you have tooth decay. You didn't use your floss. That's why you have bleeding gums and you, you didn't use your mouthwash. Because if you would have used that chlorhexidine, it would have been gone. Yes, maybe. But it's just a band-aid and it's a quick fix. Yeah. So work on that overall thing. We got to go deeper than that. And so much of that yes. starts with the nutrition. We got to look there also. And the decisions we make day after day after day that lead to it. That's how you can reverse. And you can reverse so much of this. You can reverse if it's a, like I said, if it's huge, massive a hole, you probably can reverse it, but you should never go that way. So ideally, let's see this way. In nature, our teeth are immune against tooth decay. They are mm. hard as a stone. Just because we got soft, because we got convenient, we're sitting around, we don't even <laughs> eat anymore. We can drink our food. We can even call someone to bring it so we don't even have to move to get it. So we, when we were eating let's say uh, meat from the bone and therefore this hard stuff would already clean our teeth or, or raw vegetables, it just cleans it. We now eat processed sticky foods and smoothies and way too much and yeah. we got soft and our teeth got soft. And you can see it is 90% incidence. This is number one chronic disease worldwide and it's 100% reversible. Right. Isn't that insane? Absolutely insane. And they didn't just get, we didn't just get soft and our teeth get soft, but they also got crooked. And that brings me to my mm. next question. I hear a lot. So your dentist recommends getting Invisalign. What, what do you say to that? How, how are your feelings on Invisalign? What if someone recommends it right off the bat without any other solutions? Mm, I actually personally think a line of therapy is like, if you, he only recommends it, obviously, or she, if you have crooked teeth. So you ask for straight teeth. So then I believe personally aligners are the best solution because you skip the metal part. Because yeah. after the percent when I was a kid in the 90s, I had braces twice, metal braces, the usual, the standard ones, but there was no electromagnetic fields. Like before 1995, yep. it was literally not existent. But after 1995 and now 2023, it's like you would, huge. would build a huge antenna into your mouth. Yes. And there are studies showing that it can seriously alter your brain and how you how you function in this world as a teenager growing up can make you more anxious. Obviously, this is, this is a central nervous system and you now have an antenna in the midst of it, which can also, con on top of it, have maybe nickel in it or whatever. So mm -hmm. aligners would definitely be the better strategy. Obviously, ideally supported with osteopathy, posturology, mm -hmm. and again, nutrition and lifestyle habits that support that growth of that body. Ideally. Yeah. Is is it true? I was talking to a practitioner uh, that a lot of times when you do the Invisal Invisalign and when you're getting a reading for your mouth and everything, you're in a position that's usually back or your head is up or you're laying backwards, which alters it, which which actually can be worse for it if you take that kind of reading of the teeth and that it should uh. be in a specific, you know, you should be sitting upright and doing it that way. Because if you're leaning back in it, it could actually shift how it is. I don't know. I, I really just heard it, didn't look into it. 
Do you have any thoughts on that? I think what you are referring to is just take, take, it's called taking the bite in dentistry. Yeah. So how you bite upper and lower jaw, obviously, if you uh, lay backwards, your lower jaw drops a little bit. If you move forwards, it goes more forward. Yeah. So you should ideally, when taking a bite, but I think most dentists will do it anyway, seating. Okay. Uh, unless it's not important, but uh, so I think for orthodontics, yeah, no, I think it's important to do that seated. Yeah. So seated, upright, very relaxed, and then take the bite. This is how it should be. Ideally, like when you do ortho, when it's about orthodontics, it's probably fine. But for example, imagine what we need to do. We have dental repair going on. That means you send in a panoramic x-ray and we plan the full case. Mm -hmm. So besides having metals, root canals, and the cavitations, you obviously had a lot of dental repair done. Therefore, your whole bite is probably completely off. And if your yeah. bite is completely off, your whole TMJ is off and your whole neck is off and your whole body alignment is probably like adapted to this bite. <laughs> so what we like to do is use posturology in that phase from initially coming in where we just do the health optimization, meaning taking that metals out safely, placing those immediate ceramic implants and taking care of the cavitations and all the healing. Then we have about four to six months of a healing phase. Let's say this is laying the groundwork for the house build up later on. And then when you come back six months later, then you get your crown work, your aesthetics, your teeth, which is then the house on top of it. First of mm. all, it's like the basement. You mm -hmm. build the basement, solid foundation first. And then it's always form follows function. So aesthetics last. So in that phase, if you at least close by, we can work with posturology, <clears throat> which aligns your eyes, your jaw, your hips, your feet, especially, and use that time to rebalance everything. And then when you come back for the final crown work, we can put it into a nice aligned system. So the alignment should always, obviously you see we have people in the staff that are osteopaths, they work on these things, but I'm also in that whole online platform that I'm building for the, de the, the future dentist, the bio dentist. I will include the posturology too, because this is also easy to systemize it. You just have to know that it exists and how easy it is actually, and then put it in. For example, in that six months, you will have just different inlay, inlets in your feet, like in your, the soles are a little bit manipulated yep. to work on that fascial trains. And it, it doesn't take much longer for your nervous system to get um, at, back to normal, to neutral. So just all about the timing, how to use what strategically. And it's really fascinating that it's a micro to macro. It's what happens here is yes. actually reflected throughout in the macro. And you can't separate the two. So don't think you just have to look at that. Look at the whole body and the teeth. Yes. Yes. It's just, and actually perfect. It's not, it's the micro to macro from the posture because this is kind of like the thermostat of your bite. Yes. But also this from the micro is the entrance hall to that macro. Mm -hmm. So if that's a tiny ecosystem, that's the entrance hall. So if that is already shitty, <laughs> imagine what happens in the gut system in the whole hotel. Like oh, if yeah. the entrance hall is already bad, you, you don't usually leave the hotel, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> One glance in the mouth, bad oral health totally equals bad overall health. It's that simple. Yeah. But unfortunately, dentists are kind of still like they're not seeing themselves as doctors and doctors never look into the mouth. So mm -hmm. this is where we need to build the future dentist. That's what I'm up to. So it, it's absolutely where we need to go. This next one is something that I, I know would probably hit you as a father of four. So your dentist wants to give your child a fluoride treatment. What do you do? My child. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Fluoride. No. <laughs> is it, this is the fluoride is like the, the longest discussion, I believe, in dentistry. Fluoride in conventional dentistry is standard of care. So the dentist yeah. isn't telling you anything wrong here. This is just how we are trained. And it makes perfect sense because, like I said before, we, we all have tooth decay. We have bleeding gums. And we basically have a problem with our oral microbiome. So the Band-Aid is giving you lots of chemicals to disinfect. Fluoride is a strong disinfectant. Mm -hmm. And it also has been shown to somewhat strengthen the enamel. But it's not the real way to do it. Mm -hmm. But it works as a, I would say Band-Aid makes sense, right? So in biological dentistry, as it's all about optimizing the overall health with lifestyle and nutrition, we obviously not use anything remotely toxic in your mouth because you have to see the mouth is also the entrance to your gut 
and it has a microbiome. The oral microbiome is actually the most diversified one in the whole body and the second largest, which makes perfectly sense. But if you now use a strong disinfectant on a daily basis, you just wipe out a new all these good bacteria, which is commensal, which is symbiotic, opportunistic. Not all of them are pathogenic, but you kill it. And therefore, you lead that this leads to dysbiosis. And also, um, it's just unnecessary. So what we do is we look for the vitamin D3 in the blood work. This should be above 60 nanogram per milliliter. We prescribe the right nutrients, basically how you would water your plants. So you water your teeth, that they are always in a surplus of nutrients. It's my bone and teeth protocol. Mm -hmm. And then we use a fluoride that you would eat, uh, no, fluoride-free toothpaste that you would eat. Imagine, why would you put something into your mouth that is so toxic and that you would never eat it? Yeah, anything that goes onto your skin or into your mouth, you should look at the ingredients. Would you eat it? If it's a no, throw it away. And if you look at the ingredients of conventional toothpaste, I would say 95% of it is a no. Mm -hmm. They put not just fluoride in it. They have triclosan, carrageen, sucralose, saccharine. They, they put sweeteners in it so that you don't taste the chemicals, basically. <laughs> Sodium laurel sulfate. Lots and lots in law. And then there's even more worse things like these cleaning, uh, widening toothpaste would also have abrasives that file down your enamel, making you even more prone to getting yellow teeth and more sensitive teeth. So what we just do is we reverse it and use something that is solely natural. And the good part is there is a natural substitute for fluoride. You don't need to use fluoride. You can use hydroxyl apatite. Mm -hmm. Hydroxyl apatite is how the teeth is strong in the first place. And obviously vitamin D3 and key minerals and vitamins like vitamin K2 and magnesium are very much important for strong teeth, teeth hard as stone. Sticking to what dentists uh, tell you to use as far as, you know, toothpaste and everything, so you're using mouthwash like Listerine. What do you tell people like that? <laughs> you're still losing the you're still using the blue Listerine? Are you crazy? That's what I would tell them. Did you know? Did you know that Listerine actually, um, the blue stuff that's everywhere, was marketed very heavily as a floor cleaner for hospitals and stuff? Oh wow. Yeah, yeah which makes perfect sense. Yeah. But then I don't know how marketing worked in this world. They may, were able to find another solution for it and sell it to masses. Because I think every single person on this planet has used this stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I of bad to. brand. Yeah, you I used, used to. to and, and I used to listen to the the regular dentist. I would go as, when I was younger and say, all right, it's got to be. You know, you feel that burning. That means it's working right over. Yeah. Time. <laughs> but actually, if you just measure this, you can measure the pH of anything. And we know no. that if the pH or acidity level goes below five, it's not good for your enamel. And I think Listerine is way below five. Oh, wow. Uh, anything that is remotely acidic will at least for a couple of minutes or let's say until the saliva is able to catch up and open up the enamel and makes it more porous and then bacteria and stuff can jump in. So it is actually acidic and it's so toxic that like it's good for cleaning a floor, but definitely not for cleaning your entrance hall here. That stuff should really go into the bin and easy to use other strategies for it, like more natural ones. Yeah. Do you, do you recommend more natural mouthwashes or just oil pulling a combination? What do you recommend? To, if you're going to throw I'm, away the Listerine, what do you recommend then? That's what I would do. Uh, <laughs> what I personally recommend or what is in our, let's say, superhuman oral health care strategy is oil pulling specifically yeah. with coconut oil. Yeah. Because anyone can buy or probably a lot of people already have extra virgin coconut oil at home to fry stuff. Mm -hmm. And you would just you it's a classic Ayurvedic strategy where you just take um, a teaspoon full of the coconut oil, you put it into your mouth, you swish it around for five minutes at least to 15 minutes, even longer. And there is no harm in doing so. It has been shown that coconut oil is antibacterial, antiviral because of the lauric acid. And it also soothes your gums. It is also detoxing and takes out a couple of these anaerobic bacteria and other fat-soluble toxins that might lurk in your mouth. Um, it's basically just a plus for everything. You cannot do anything wrong here. The only thing is you have to do it. And you could also spice it up a little bit. For example, use one or two essential oils in the coconut oil. Yeah. Let's say you like it fresh, then use a, a minty one. 
right. you add a little bit of clove. So there's so many strategies. There's definitely not a use for any chemical toxic mouthwashes that are also known to um, affect your thyroid maybe, go into your gut system and cause lots of different symptoms maybe. On, do on that kind of, on a more vanity level of things, what do you recommend for uh, teeth whitening? Because I, I uh, get this. So your dentist recommends teeth whitening with in-office bleaching. You know, that's probably not what you would want to recommend. Uh, but Yes, definitely. To be honest, I would recommend rather, if you do any sort of bleaching, let the professionals do it. Okay. Don't do the tooth whitening stuff that you can buy over the counter, especially not the tooth whitening toothpaste. Because like I said before, there's stuff in it that files down the top layer of your teeth. And what co- what it will cause is that the top layer will stain faster. Also, mm-hmm. you get more sensitive teeth. Mm-hmm. So you have more often you have yellow teeth that leads to more often using that stuff until you file it completely down, mm-hmm. um, which is really bad for teeth sensitivity and anything. Um, and if you go to a dentist who recommends in-office bleaching or at least home office bleaching, both of it is fine because they at least know what to do. And if you combine that in-office bleaching or home office bleaching, home bleaching with the right nutrition and lifestyle, meaning you prepared your body before to have strong teeth that are not sensitive, because obviously teeth whitening for a little bit makes your teeth sensitive. But if you have vitamin D3 levels in check, you have enough minerals to compensate and everything, you don't even have a problem there. So you can do that. And what about that sensitive teeth? So I get that question. So I have sensitive teeth. Uh, should I use Sensodyne? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I actually don't know about Sensodyne, uh, but probably it's a good marketing. Probably. Uh, again, as far as I remember, Sensodyne is a, just a general t- toothpaste. Um, yeah. No, it, usually sensitive teeth or tooth decay or, or gum disease or bleeding gums are not, not a chemical deficiency. It is more often a deficiency of nutrients. and lack of building blocks so maybe maybe you can resort to using a sensor dune or let's say a gc tooth mousse or let's say maybe even a chlorhexidin if you have like an extreme reading of anaerobic bacteria for let's say one two weeks as an initial strategy but at the same time work again on key things like eating the right foods skipping all that processed crap eating nutrient-dense foods, especially animal proteins or protein at least, two gram per kilogram. Get your vitamin D3 levels checked. Support your body with vitamin D3, vitamin K2, magnesium, minerals, all these things that has been shown scientifically to build teeth and bones and nice gums. When we talk about gums, a lot of people say, so I have, my gums are bleeding. Does that mean I need to, my dentist says I need to floss more? <laughs> This is something where I personally also sometimes get attacked from actual functional dentists because, mm. because obviously out of context, if I say I don't floss and I don't recommend flossing, it can come across a little bit weird. So <laughs> let me explain. Please. So bleeding gums is again the norm. We all have tooth decay and bleeding gums. But in nature, we have teeth hard as stone and very pinkish non-bleeding gums. My gums never bleed, never. But if I personally use a floss and I have no dental repair done, my teeth are perfectly healthy besides the orthodontics, I actually can really get through with, the, with that, um, with that um, flossing. So I snap through and then I have bleeding gums. Mm-hmm. So if you are healthy and everything is fine, there is no need for you to brush in, the te- in between the teeth. It is not correct that interdental tooth decay comes from not flossing. It is a sign of a nutritional deficiency. Obviously, what it is correct, where it is correct, again, if you have massive periodontitis, a lot of dental repair, stuff that sticks in there all the time and your gums are bleeding all the time, yes, then maybe you need to floss until that's finished, until that's gone, until you back to neutral and normal and natural. But then afterwards, a long-term strategy, I don't use any floss. And I... That's not nasty at all. There is nothing sticking. So if, for example, there would be a piece of meat in between my teeth, then obviously I would use something like a toothpick or maybe even a floss to get it out. But that rarely happens, to be honest. And isn't it also... 
Yeah. Isn't it also true that most floss, conventional floss, is coated with a toxic yeah. substance to make it slide? And that comes off. So the, the, the glide, yeah, I think there's BPA on it and like estrogenic yep. compounds, seno, senoestrogens, stuff that you also don't want to have into your mouth in your mouth. So again, you see what the goal is use that stuff maybe strategically at, at the beginning, but the long-term strategy is all about your lifestyle. I know it sounds super boring, but it's actually the way to get teeth hard as stone. And for future generations, my kids. We have to actually start preparing our moms in in the like before they even get pregnant yes. to support moms and then teach them how to breastfeed and use breastfeeding as the initial orthodontic treatment, as the initial immune boost, mm -hmm. as the initial training for ma nose breathing. Because of a lot of guys out there have crooked teeth and breathing through their mouth. Yes. So future it should be there is no more dental repair, but this will take time. And that's the interesting thing, because it really does need to start with the children at a very young age. Meanwhile, when you take a child to a conventional dentist, you get all the, the wrong type of information a lot of times where it is more Listerine, more this, let's do fluoride on them already. Let's, you know, this. And, and it already starts to set up a future that's going to be hard to be healthy. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry, my kids. Yes, yes, yes. But... Again, the problem also, obviously, not to blame the dentist, um, is our lifestyle. It's just so yes. normal that we feed our kids sugar, processed foods. I think it's in, the, in Germany, it's maybe, no, I think it's the same already as in the US. Like processed foods are ruling, fast foods are actually more mm -hmm. cheaper. Kids are drinking juices. Kids seem to be not even, par uh, not even humans. They're allowed to do everything. Obviously, for me, I'm like, oh, you. Our 80s or 90s pantry probably looked the same. But actually, to be honest, my parents didn't know better. There yeah. was no research. They actually thought sugar is probably healthier than fats because that's what uh, mm, that's was right. the agenda in the 80s, right? So I get it. But I have kids and I know better. So obviously, it needs to be the responsibility of the dentist to learn about these things and teach this to their patients. But then also, obviously, patients can come in like, yeah, whatever. And then mm -hmm. don't brush. So this is the, the difficulty. So a lot of dentists just work with the general population who have never heard about all these things. And they're just like, uh, whatever. I just eat my fruit juice. I drink my fruit juice again and eat the cereals in the morning and I don't care. And maybe, uh, what did you say? I should brush once a day. Okay, I'll do that. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, See, we, we need to change that all around. And yes, <laughs> yes. It's, it's like a, a parental change it is a dental change like there, there's a lot of change that has to happen for this to to really work but but the yeah. end result is like optimal health that's the greatest result we could have yeah but you know that health is uh, is defined as absence of disease and we just have to first under make people understand especially also my colleagues that optimal health is even existing yes. and that optimal health is an investment and this is obviously where you and me are in that bubble for years yeah. Because we optimize everything. And obviously, an optimized person would never use any toxic in their mouth. They understand straight away. So, yes. And this is also part of that online curriculum or co co uh, is that change is what we need. But also, at the same time, what is the biggest fear of all humans out there? Change. It's always, yes, they're afraid <laughs> of change. Then I'm coming in changing the whole dentistry game. I'm trying to. That's why you're so damn scary, Dr. Doe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But luckily, no. like, when I wrote the book, like this is when like the most arrows flew, flew in my like arrows were in yeah, my back yeah. from colleagues. But luckily, oh, yeah. because I just I think because I went so let's say at least consistent with whatever I did and yeah never changed the way. Now finally, it's moving towards the right direction. I think you see that too. Like every there is a little bit of a shift. People are thinking more about their health. They want to invest a little bit. So now we have to be there. Because the future pay out, like the general dental patient, the general dentistry, I had a lot of talks with, with dentists the last couple of years um, before these um, calls, because I'm in that bubble. All my patients fly in. It's more like they're fans. They're preparing mm -hmm. for this. This is a total, and I forgot about how the real dentist lives. Mm -hmm. the real dentist has to see like a ton of patients a day, okay. has no time for them, has really pushed numbers to make ends meet. And then has to like negotiate prices and all these things. So, and also on top of that, no one likes to go to the dentist. So you treat people that don't want to see you with the stuff they don't want to have and they have to sell them on it. 
So mm-hmm. therefore, we have to change how people see dentists. That's why the future dentist is um, the real bio dentist who um, knows how to optimize. And then the patients, they are coming, they appreciate it. Like when you clinic. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's definitely a change in your mentality, sometimes in belief systems that is very ingrained. And that takes time. And we understand that. And that goes through education. That goes through yeah. meeting them where they are and educating them slowly about these things. Like, why yes. would you use fluoride? Let's really break it down, like, and see. Like, I understand you've been told it's good, but did you actually look into it and go beyond what you were told? And, and that starts to at least open the doors. Once you have awareness, you could start to make changes from there. But if you don't even have awareness and you're just like, fluoride's good, I've never heard different. And then you start <laughs> to hear people like you and be like, wait a second. Yeah, maybe it's not so good. And then they, they, then there's the caption saying like fear mongering. This is oh like, yeah 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 anti science like, fear mongering like this and that yeah I mean people again that's where people don't want to change and get like kind of upset because they say yeah. don't change I don't want to change it's easier yeah, please, this way please. Yeah, don't do it don't say it doctor Tom, even though maybe it's correct so I got don't a couple more it, left for you before we we kind of finish this off one of them I I do hear uh, quite a bit about and see a lot of people trying different things for. So I'm told I have TMJ disorder and pain. What do I do next? TMJ disorder and pain. Obviously, you need to find, again, someone who is skilled, but ideally combining it with the overall system. Like I said before, TMJ is not only the biting service. It could also be related to your eyes, could be related to your feet, could be related to your whole posturology. But usually... It has something to do with the three health killers that we just touched on. Metals with different bite height, various different metals, for example, can also lead to stress, oxidative stress. Your body may be compensated with a little bit of grinding and chewing yeah, because that's a stress relief. But again, then it will tense your muscle. Then it will maybe offset these muscles here and your TMJ joint is a compromised position. So it's bite, but also oxidative stress from the wrong materials and maybe even the nervous system from cavitations and root canals. So again, the big picture um, applies, but obviously also bite and orthodontics. So, but not just bite and orthodontics. Yeah, yeah. And it's a big one. I see more and more people suffering from that and just general pain in that area in the jaw and everything. So you got to be able to look at those things. Just a couple left here. Uh, and this one is is something you've mentioned quite a bit. And I hear so I, I want to take charge of my dental health and overall health. What supplement should I be taking? I know this is something near and dear to you because you have a supplement line that, that you work with and have created a bunch of supplements. Yes. So that's actually a good question. Yeah, I created Subs Nutrition um, already before I even had my clinic in 2014 with the idea of formulating it myself and using only highly controlled stuff and without anything added, not even a lubricant. And there's one specific product, obviously, that I've designed. It's called Pone and Teeth. So mm. this is, has everything in it. It's kind of like the one-stop shop for hard teeth, but also nice gums and on top of it because teeth and bones share a little bit of a similarity rec- recovery of other strong, fast-growing tissues. Your nails will grow faster and your hair too and obviously your skin. So there's vitamin D3, which is important, K2, minerals like magnesium, zinc, boron, and a lot of activated B vitamins. This is in a very well-rounded complex. You can just ch- check out Subs Nutrition and the whole bone healing protocol. There's also a couple of formulations that evolve around various different amino acids for your neurotransmitters, detoxification, liver phase one, two, as well as other proteins for tissues. Collagen is a big one that you should look into because 50% of your body is collagen. Yep. Gum tissue is collagen tooth structure, bone structure, all collagen. So huge on protein here. And yeah, but obviously also the other things like omega-3 fatty acids, the basics, <laughs> you know, the basics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basics that we usually forget about. <laughs> yeah, because we go into almost. details first. Yeah. Right, right. All right, the last one here, it's going to be a softball. So I'm a dentist and want to learn more. When is your course available? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that question. <laughs> so for now, the this online certification, I think I don't want to overpromise and then underdeliver, but we are in this week in the midst of filming it and it took me a couple of years to like script everything and make it perfect. So finally, I think we will drop it last week of January 2024. Oh, nice. But if you're Coming interested, up soon. it's soon, it's soon. 
but it's in the making for a long time. And yeah. I'm training dentists for more than 10 years on weekend courses, but I just thought about how can I speed things up and how can I make it into this next level? Because biological dentistry finally is becoming a little bit of a thing. It's still in the point point zero zero one percentages of all dentists. And biological dentistry means you're just using, let's say, the biomaterials. You know about metals, root canals, cavitations. That's the technical things. But the biodentistry concept is how to meld biological dentistry with functional medicine and biohacking or health optimization using the nutrition, the life set, everything, the future dentist, so to speak. So if you are a dentist, anyways, listening in, go into my IG uh, and there's probably a link to the wait list because there's already a wait list because people are waiting for that course. For well, I'm time. sure they are. And they it's long be. overdue. I know, guys. I know, guys. But I'm on it. <laughs> so tell us where we could uh, find you on IG. I know your handle and where people could learn more about becoming a patient or learn more about biological dentistry. Yeah, t- totally. Ideally, it's always the IG because there's everything sorted. You click in the link in the bio, you find a tab bio, link to my clinic, the DNA Health and Aesthetics in my hometown, and obviously to that course but also there is a pdf link where you can get the whole um let's say the bulletproof all healthcare strategies as a pdf for free so there's probably where you find anything also the link to my book various podcasts youtube channel go there oh, dr dome one d-r-d-o-m-e one is the handle but you probably link it in the show notes oh uh, we will definitely link it and i'm a big fan of your handle and uh, love everything you're putting out there Continue the good work. I know you had a long day recording everything, doing all this talking, but no, it's getting out to the people and you are bringing them awareness and empowerment, which is amazing. Yeah, that's that's the whole mission. I want to help as many people as possible as you do too. Therefore, I love co-elevation. The next level of dentistry is not old and stinky and like very slow, but it's going to be fun, young and wild dentists. And then I think the platform will also bring in the true path and more doctors, because I believe that any health coach should be able to diagnose the mouth and should be an integral part of any journey to optimal health in the future that we don't forget where it starts. Absolutely the- agree with you. And I'm glad we're on that same path together, my man, Dr. Joan, thank you so much for coming back on. Thank you so much, Casper, for having me. Yeah. And to the audience, be sure to check out www.dnaesthetics.de for more information. And also SUPS, that's S-U-P-Z, nutrition.com for products to keep you on your health journey and keep your teeth all healthy. And until next time, continue writing your own healing story.